you don't notice when they're there. But when they're gone and all around, you see the things you didn't. Clouds and markings on the stone. Acanthus on the columns. Mushrooms on the lawn. I've only felt this way once or twice. So quiet and so alone. The voices in my head downed their thoughts and stood as I stood at the gates. The key light in my hand. The John Deere purring behind. I wanted then to last longer than it could. Which is what it felt like standing there. The key heavy in my mind. Calling me back to the life that I was living. Before I came to lock the gates. And realised I was breathing. Not the air. But silence. Before the night falls. Landowner, groundskeeper, quarryman and miner, bottlesmith, sort designer, clinkermonger, harbour, party house, theatre maker, writer's bank and legislator, pan impresario, comedian and trickster, fire breather, burn survivor, nursery and bat cave, a hidey hole for nature, proprietor of mud. Rosarium and gardener, archivist and pladium, a tough guy by the water, a tender, ruined god. No one knows, but access to the gardens must be through the gaps in window frames we're yet to find. And what we know is never right. We do not know if each one has a pattern like a fingerprint upon the wing, and if these markings are unique. They live inside the joist holes and in the cracks where the concrete's dried and fled, and eat 3,000 midges daily. We shine our lights and want to know the noises. Are they general or specific? Do they wake as children do in darkness and call out for their parents? It must be like a city, all of them barreling through the rush hours of dawn and dusk towards their long nap in the walls when they'll drop their temperature and show us blue lumps on the sensor so we cannot tell the life and stone apart. You do not see us coming but we see you marching purposefully across the lawn to where the hares frolic and the huntress is sentry or once was when Pan believed the woods and all the does were his and not some delivals or others when land was lands and no man's and we a natural plunge before the spade, before the kiln when we would ditch and not some trap to hold the sheep and horses back and not some trick of green on green to make it look like everything is yours and yours alone. dig, or else conduct a survey, and bit by bit fetch up things born or created. Our work is time, time it takes to know the layers time has laid, and hope our shovels aren't like fires, and alkaline exists to keep the skulls and femurs so we can carbon date the teeth, or else the pollen dispersed between strata. We are not miners, but disciples, and work to spread belief in land, not as commercial, 
but as sacred interest. Though pollen isn't FEMA, nor is pollen artifact, so much is in the earth and rarely cached to resurrect it, and it's safer there where land still belongs to land. Our only hope is to show an extract played back on the widescreen of the ground. With no means of getting out or anywhere, to walk for miles is to court a cold that takes a while, comes in waves, shivers off the spirit, like a cat does water when it rains, no port nor cottage in the forest, which is how it feels to have fields beyond boundaries and clouds that turn the land around and further fields where no one knows our name or cares or thinks or speaks as we, nobodies from the big house. My Lord, only in our poems do we possess the romance of the plough. The page becomes the field on which we sow our only value. No wonder why the men without beg for your patronage. There's much of you, but none of us. We leave the ditch along the boundary and the avenue of oak. Though think me not ungrateful, there is a beauty order makes, and I thank you for your kingdom's trust. I only ask to be acknowledged. Like stonemasons and labourers, I made your world possible, and England a heaven where I too exist. I must have been a stone once, satisfied with stillness. I watched the dark dilute the corridors and could hold this pose for hours. There's pleasure in being anchored. Not many stay down for long, like moles, one said, another worms. They march up the stairs like lords into the light. I like it here. I know my place. I go up high to feel the wind, when wind does what the wind does, fast and low and furious, and rain is grit, is glass and try to keep my head up, try not to move an inch. And I do this while I hold my hands up like a fin and beg, pray and beg for it. For lightning head to toe along the conduit I call myself. Since the summer started, I've been amongst the pooty, spine alert to rumbles. To see inside that second when the lightning strikes. To see the ground below alive like fire in the August pines. The mud tracks and hedgerows bright as molten glass. To see that country from above electrify the land. Even if I go unnoticed, I know I played my part. The riot of my younger days seared their years into the stone. And now, here at the curtain call, I watch my work and rise, condemned to drown inside my own updraft. Here's the world I might have known, woods and fields and open time had nature cast me differently as, say, 
a blade of grass, and not the spark, applauding in the chimney of the one night only theatre of the North. Sometimes, when it's only me inside the hall, no cars on the avenue, slow days when the rain's hard, the farmer's out on Lumpwell Field ploughing earth or seeding ground, his tractors wreathed in gulls. I think of them, the muses, their tireless night through pit disasters, grieving mothers, parties, fire, blackout, war. I think of them, these mysteries, niched in Vanbrugh's vision, but nonetheless here. And I watch them while the rain falls, while the bats begin to fidget inside their homes, inside the walls. And I know these plaster effigies are just as good as any faith one might employ to find one's place in the empty hall of history. Stone is turning into wing behind the cracking robes. I sit here and listen. Today I wore good boots to cross the fields of fallen trees, tap roots against the wind, to find the hidden mausoleum, a hidey hole for teens. I crossed the ha-has, wire fences, stepped between the branches on a tenant farmer's land, and found no epitaphs nor caskets, but local news. Who fancied who, carved into stone? Wayward sons and daughters must have thought themselves immortal. High inside this tomb a father built to mourn his jack. And high on love, with only stars, their quiet knowledge and the creaking trees. Built to hold it never held, built to mourn, it never did. Today, after the storm, I came and found this poem sleeping in the crypt.